begin with, according to history, there are 554 different tribes in South America, North America, and Canada. And of course, each tribe have their own philosophy of life, their own way, and their own religion. I can only speak of the Lakota people, Lakota Sioux, because of the fact that I'm a Sioux, a Lakota, and then I learn more. The Sioux religion, to say the universe, is a tabernacle of God. It's a temple of God. It's an open Bible. And after thousands of years of exercising their belief, They have their children. In other words, they are building characters. When a child is born in a family, they uh, teach him. As soon as he has any understanding, they teach him what is right and what is wrong. Many of the families don't have very many children, maybe one or two in a family. And also they can, they can take care of them. And maybe one or two that could devote their whole time in training this child. In other words, they are building characters for future generations, that this generation may be better than their generation, and so forth. And of course the main subject is the Great Spirit. They talk about the trees, and the herbs, and the springs, and the birds, and the water, and the sun, and the moon, and the stars. All have different meanings with their own power. They said everything within the universe have life, even the rocks. So they respect everything that is within this universe. And they respect the Mother Earth. They said the Great Spirit is that Father and the Mother Earth, which gives sustenance to life. feed all living things, taking care of all living things. It's most important in their life. They like to pray. And in the beginning, I was told that many of the wise men among the Indian people are always seeking the power which gave them life and also gave the life to the universe and also gave life to the Mother Earth. They created many religions, many religions. The Sioux have seven. They sweat Lodge, the purification ceremony, and then the fasting, four days, four nights, without food and water, denying themselves the necessity of life, and then the sun dance, and the peace pipe. The Indian believe that because they live within the realms of the of the God's power and the very their very life, 
the spirit that gives this body life. They must respect that power at all time. And when they pray, they don't just go out there and pray. They make preparation, like the sweat tipi, sweat bath, sweat lodge. These are the beginning of the Indians' belief. That was before the peace pipe was brought to them. The peace pipe was brought to them only recently, maybe two, three thousand years ago. But their religion went further. I think the Indian religion is one of the, one of the oldest religion today. And the Indian live according to their belief that they become one of the greatest nation, the most religious people on the face of the earth. Is, is there a uh creation myth, you know, how the world began, how, do you have, is there any tradition of that? The only thing that I was told by my grandmother, she was 60, since 96 years old, she was blind, and I used to, she has a cane, I used to lead her on when I was only about three years old. She told me many stories, many uh, histories of her ancestors back, maybe five, six hundred years back, they had their great grandmother, what their, her great grandmother told her. And they said there used to be water, flood, and they were scared because that history was, has been handed down to them, that they're, they're scared and there might be another flood. One time, some of the older people got together and wanted to know where the sun goes down. So they made preparations to make extra moccasins, food, packed, and they was traveling towards the west. He said they crossed the uh, Rocky Mountain, his little big horn Rocky Mountain, and then some other uh, mountains near California. When they got there, they got on top of the hill, and there was, it looks like there was a big flood coming. They were scared. They almost panicked. But he, they, one of the men said, we have to stay here and watch the sun. So they watched the sun, and it went in right into the water. She said. Of course it didn't, but then it looks like it went right into the water, the ocean. Mm -hmm. That sun went into the water. Yeah. So there are many things that uh, they're always seeking the powers. Like now, they believe that the trees are commanded by God to beautify the earth and the fruits to give sustenance to the human race or even four-legged animals. And they have a duty to perform. And they do it without protesting, rain or shine. They, they're obeying God's commandment. And unless the human race is like the tree or the fruit tree or the sun that goes day and night, obeying God's commandment, he will never survive. That was the belief they have. So they are really, in other words, in the modern sense, the Christian people, 
they believe in God. The whole body, mind, and heart and soul. They they go all out in their religion. And in doing so, they became a, a great nation. We have many great leaders. We have chiefs. We have leaders that would talk early in the morning. They said somewhere around 3 or 4 o'clock. A crier would talk. Be telling the people that they will have to do better. They have to concentrate more in order to reach God, in order to get the blessings of the Great Spirit. So, I think they are the most religious people in the world. I don't know about the other tribes. I don't know what their symbol is. What our symbol, the Lakota people, is a peace pipe. And we still have the peace pipe. And when it was given to the Lakota people with certain instructions, there were, uh, it, it was no Bible because the Indian people were already closer to God that the woman that delivered the peace pipe didn't have to give him a Bible, but a simple instruction. She said, when you need help, when you're in need, use this. And she gave it to the chief. And of course, we have a lot of respect for that peace pipe that was presented to us by a mysterious person, they said. They do not understand the person that delivered the peace pipe because he faded away in a cloud. A cloud was formed and when it was cleared away, she was gone. And so they didn't know in this modern time, after they saw Jesus' picture with long hair and robe, they often wondered about that, whether it was the Savior that presented the peace pipes to the Lakota people. Mm. He didn't have to preach to them because they already didn't have a lot of respect to the Great Spirit. Mm -hmm. And their whole life is based on that belief of the law of nature, that nature is God, and God is nature. Mm. So, even today, we do not know definitely what sort of a character, whether it was angel or whether it was Christ. We don't know who presented the pipe. But miracle, she uh, showed some miracles to the Indian people. And they were afraid more of the power of God after the peace pipe was presented to them. Of course, they always live in fear of God. They thought they might make a mistake or something like that, but they began to see things in a better light, their light. So even today, the Sioux are hanging on, hanging on to their old traditional way, their religion, and their belief, and they're teaching their children. They're going back. Because after the white people came into our country and introduced a different way of life, that 
kind of messes things up for the Indian people because it looks like their life is better with all the cars and everything all modern that their life is different but today they found that they must stay close to God more so today because after all the trouble in this world they feel that Something will happen to the to the world like it happened in Noah's time, and they're afraid. Yeah. And of course, they don't believe in the violence. They're peaceful people. They have to fight violence with peaceful means. But when they have to really defend their women and children. They fight. Most of the battle that was fought by the Indian people were all in self-defense. They fought, they fought for survival in their own country. And of course we know that from the beginning when the white pearl, the first white man that set foot in our country was welcomed. We gave him everything we had. We gave him room so that he survived in the first winter that he spent in our country. And of course today we know that he showed his gratitude in other ways. So the Indian people are appealing to, you know, there were very, uh, there were many treaties made between the government and the Indian people, and, and the government has broken every treaty that he has ever made with the Sioux. I think there are 118 treaties, and uh, the Sioux never broke a single one. They kept their treaties because they are God-fearing people and they cannot lie. That's the only law they have is they must never lie. And when they made the treaties, they meant to keep it and they still kept those treaties because you can't lie to God and expect to survive. That was their religion. They said you must never lie. Because if you lie to your fellow man, you can also lie to God, to your God. And that's dangerous. That's not very good. So we kept all our treaties intact. And all we ask the government today is to fulfill his treaty obligations. It's long overdue. And these treaties were made under God. Usually missionaries would pray and you saw the symbol where an Indian and a white man shook hand for peace and better understanding and cooperation, what they never kept. When they see more of a country, they want more of a country and they use violent means in obtaining it. We ceded over two billion acres of land to the government. And he made certain concessions, many concessions, which he never kept. So when we ask the government to look into his treaties, we are not asking for anything that is not ours. It's ours and we want it. And today the Indians are getting together it appealed to some of the people who understand the Indian people and the need of the Indian people in their own country. Even in this modern time with all the Christian people in the world, 
they were still condemning many of our Indian boys. This is an Indian country. They are sovereign nations. They were overrun. But there was never a war declared. They cannot claim conquest. And discovery is out because this is the Indian country and they were here when they came into our country. So we are hoping and praying that the Great Spirit visit the mind and the hearts of these leaders in government to have a better understanding and not to make the same mistake their ancestors made, but to remedy and to fulfill what they have not done according to the trees. So we are going to pray again this summer. We're going to have our Sundance religion ceremony on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Yankton Indian Reservation, Rosebud Indian Reservation, and Eagle Butte Indian Reservation. There'll be four places where they're going <clears> to <throat> pray. And the peace pipe will be brought out for the people to see because we still have that peace pipe which was handed to us by some mysterious holy angel or either a holy man, spiritual man, mm. yeah. Mm. Somebody said it was a white buffalo woman, have you ever heard? That's the one. Yeah. I'll tell you a little about the history of the peace pipe. During the, that period of time, there, there's a lot of buffaloes, but sometimes the buffalo would disappear and the people would go hungry. And it was one of these times that hunters were going out, coming in empty. No buffaloes, no wild games. And they feel that God has punished them for doing something wrong. And they prayed. And two hunters were returning from a trip, you know, sitting on top of the hill. The people back home are depending on them to find buffaloes. And they were, they felt bad because they have nothing to tell the people. There was, they didn't find any wild games. As they sat on top of the hill, they saw something moving in the, in the north. It was approaching pretty fast. And they sat there wondering what it was. When it came near, it was the most beautiful woman they ever saw. One of these men have bad intentions. He liked the woman and have evil mind. His evil mind began to work. And the other one was afraid because he never saw a woman like that before, even among the own, their own people. And the woman stood a little ways and called the one with the evil mind motioned him to come over and a cloud engulfed the two and when it was cleared away only skeletons remained. He was no more. His life was taken from him and all his flesh was gone out of his bone. 
And the woman said, you go home and tell your leader that I will, that I will come to see him. So he got up and he started to run. When he got back, he told the chief and the leaders, he said, there is a mysterious woman, a holy woman. And he told the chief what happened to the other man. So they put up a teepee, the biggest one they have, and they got ready. And the woman came over. She had a bundle. She presented this bundle to, to the chief. She opened it and pull out a peace pipe. They didn't, they never knew the peace pipe before. Presented to, to the chief. He said, the great spirit sent me. He wants you to have this pipe. And when you are in need, and when you're in trouble, you must use it in your prayers to the Great Spirit. And he will answer your prayers. There was no doubt about it. He said, she said, he will answer your prayers. He will give you what you need. And when she started out, Everybody watched her. She went little ways and she was engulfed by a cloud. And when that cloud disappeared, there remained a white buffalo calf. And that was a sign of plenty. She went further and there was a buffalo going toward the hill. From that day on, they prayed and the buffalo returned. So that was the story of the peace pipe. And we still have it. Yes. And we pray every summer. And just like the woman mysterious woman, we saw signs. It doesn't happen every year. But when the people are better prepared and in better condition to pray to the Great Spirit, we see those signs. We see the signs in the form of clouds. We will see an Indian standing up there with his hands raised towards the heaven, dancing. And we see eagles flying over the Sundance ground, dancing. They glide above the Sundance ground and they start to dance. I was in my car up in the mountains uh, last weekend, last Saturday, uh -huh. and uh, I was just sitting in the car. It was way out where there wasn't any uh, houses or anything. Uh -huh. And I was sitting there for a while reading some uh, ecology book, and this crow started calling, you know. Uh -huh. oh! <laughs> and flying around, and then uh, I looked up, and there were these two eagles. Uh -huh. He was the crow was calling to me to say, "Hey, look out the window." The window. <laughs> look up in the sky. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people don't know that the mineral art talks Sioux. We understand what to say, and uh, the crow talk, but you have to train him. Yeah, you have to train them time they're little, talk Indian to him. And he'll talk very clearly. 
Mm. And he's the biggest liar that ever lived. He can lie to you. Yeah. The crow. Crow. Huh. But Meadow Lawrence, they're early in the morning when they would <laughs> talk through. They, they sometimes they get nasty, you know, nasty words. They said the girl wet the bed. <laughs> <laughs> And the boy wet the bed, wet his bed, and so forth, you know, things like that. <laughs> and then they see a thunder uh, storm coming, and I said, hurry up and get back over here. Said, mm -hmm. You thunder birds, he said, get over here. <laughs> you know, they they say funny things, you know, They're, they joke, yeah. and we talk to them. Okay. We joke with them. <laughs> but crows. They lie. They big liars. My grandfather was sitting in his teepee, my grandma, and uh, one of the neighbors lived about a mile up the creek. He said, "Hey," he said. He called this Indian's name and he said, "He butcher a beef. He invites you for supper." So my grandfather said. I don't know whether to, be, to believe the crow or not. He always lied. They didn't go, they just sat there and after a while they said, let's go, maybe he's telling the truth for once. So they went. And uh, there's nothing happened. They were just sitting around and doing the uh, was showing a moccasin, the other one was making the tomahawk or something, you know. The tourists had yeah. You know, they sell it to the tourist. And uh, he said, cousin, he said, uh, Crow went over there and he said, uh, you invited us to supper that you butcher. And uh, <laughs> Crow was sitting on, a, uh, on top of the house. He's a big liar, he said. He, he took off. <laughs> 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 and at that time, uh, the Indians have a lot of cattle, you know, but they can't even uh, butcher their own cattle. Why? They have to have permission from the government agent. What I don't know happen? why. What if, would happen if they... Then you get thrown in jail. Your own cattle. Hmm. So uh, he when, said, when hey, was, yeah. that was back in 1900 on up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, cousin, he said, I did butcher cow. It belongs to me, but I didn't get no permission. So we have to, we got it in the cellar, he said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, they, in, uh, there are a lot of restrictions. The Indians were practically, I don't know, they were ruled with iron hand. My grandfather uh, on both sides, my dad's uh, father and my mother's father, both became uh, a cattleman, ca stockman. My grandfather, Fast Thunder, he's a chief, uh, raised 707 spotted ponies. And the government gave him the brand 707 spotted ponies. Mm -hmm. And he had about maybe three, four hundred of other stock, registered stock. Maybe he had over a thousand head of cattle. And he had two white men working for him. The running those, the combines were fresh in 1906 or seven. Combine, you know that one mm -hmm. well, like this. There's, he bought two of them to have this white man operate. Uh -huh. And then he found a little colored boy along the railroad track going towards Rushville, Nebraska. They were freighting, so they went into Rushville uh, to get freight for the different uh, stores, you know, reservation stores. And they saw this little boy coming down the track, so they they meet him, you know. And, Ask him, and he said, he's coming from Omaha. A little boy, maybe about seven, eight years old. Huh. He was hungry, so they feed him. Uh -huh. And uh, my grandpa said, uh, I'm going to, he asked, they asked him, uh, there's few guys talk English, you know. Little colored boy talk English, he wouldn't understand. Uh -huh. uh, he asked uh, if he could go home with him and live with him. To the earth. So my grandfather took the little boy. My mother knew, uh, 
Okay. Who's his name? Baxter. Alec. Alec Baxter. Huh. 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 His name is Baxter. And he became, uh, you know, became a man, about 20, 30 years old. He talked Sioux. And my grandfather paid him with cattle and horses. So he had quite a herd. And uh, one day he said, uh, he called him his father. I said, Father, I'm, I think I'm going over the hill and see the country, see other people. So he said, all right, take your stock. He said, you might need him. Well, he left the place, he said, with practically maybe 50, 60 head of cattle and same amount of horses he was driving. Hmm. And he went to, she's from uh, another district. I'm from uh, the Woodenay district and she's from Kyle hmm. district. He went to Little One, Chief Little One. And Chief Little One adopted him. And he was at Kyle until his death. He's, he's an Indian. Practically, he talked Indian and he learned all the Indian tradition, mm -hmm. dance, sing, mm -hmm. oh, everything. He was a, just like an Indian. Better Indian than a lot of Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he hated drinking. He hated whiskey, and he hated dogs. I don't know why. Maybe he got bitten by dogs someplace. You know, they said uh, he had built his own little one, give him a piece of land. Shh. Hey, go on. Uh, the little one gave him a piece of land, and he built a house. He built a house on it. And uh, when they people buy potatoes and peel it, he gets a peeling of the potatoes and cut it up and plant it. And he raised good crop. He didn't have to plant the whole potatoes, mm -hmm. just the peeling. Wow. Yeah. He raised a lot of good potatoes. <laughs> He's quite a farmer. Yeah. And, yeah, and everybody like him. He's related to all the Indians. Uh -huh. Yeah, brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts and grandfathers. He called him all kinds of relations. The movie's over. So, uh... The movie's over. He's, uh... They raised quite a few colored people. The Tyne family, Thomas Tyne. Thomas Tyne, Tyne died recently. He. He's the one that acted in the, uh, the man called Horse, oh, one that sang. He's my uncle. He died mm -hmm. just about four or five days ago. Oh. <coughs> His father is a white man. His mother is a full blood Indian woman. Thomas Tyne. There, there is a uh, colored kid, mm -hmm. Charlie Baxter, yeah. Rusty. Oh. Rusty, Charlie Rusty, still living at Billings. He's old now. I want to visit with him, but uh, I couldn't. He lives at Billings, Montana. Uh -huh. He talks Sioux. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Talk good Sioux. There is quite a few of these colored boys among the Indian. The Indians adopted them, you know. And white men, same way. That's why we have a lot of mixed bloods. And a lot of those mixed blood, they don't, uh, they don't consider them white, even if they only have one eighth Indian. They're Indian, yeah. so Indian is a magic word. Everybody wants to be Indians, and that's uh, that's uh, something that is good. We realize. Well, I met a guy. He he looks like he's a white man, but he said, "King," he said, "I'm one thirty second Cherokee." He said, and "I'm proud of it." <laughs> one thirty second, and he's proud of it. 
So my guy, I said, you more of a white man. Well, how about the white blood? I said, I don't care about the white blood. <laughs> as long as I have Indian blood. He said, I'm human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he told me. Indians are good people. Everybody wants to be Indian. Even today, a lot of people want to be Indian. They want to go to Indian religion. Mm -hmm. They want to live with them because they're generous people. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they're not like the white people. You think a white person can can get into Indian religion? No, I don't think so. You have to have have your lifestyle changed. It took the Indians maybe ten, fifteen, twenty thousand years to change it. And if you want to pray to the Great Spirit like the Indians do, it's you have to change your whole life. Mm. You have to be an Indian practically. Not Indian, but you're going to respect nature more, because nature is God, according to the Indians. Nature is God, and made our uh, God is nature. See, so uh, we uh, we lecture in uh, St. Louis, and all night long, some of the students come up to our room. They want to join the Indian religion. He said, we want to be saved, we want to save ourselves. We know that the white man is already doomed. He said, they don't. They don't pray to the Great Spirit like the Indians do. He said, I don't think they mean it. I know they don't, he said. They can go to church and pray and come back and do something worse. They think God forgive them because they went to church. But the Indian people, they don't look at it that way. They have to change their whole life and not go back to it. Once you get rid of some of your your uh, weaknesses, like drinking or smoking, you don't go back to it. Because if you pray to God to get rid of those things, you can't lie to God. So that's how serious the religion, Indian religion is. And uh, I told... Uh, I said, not that we don't want you to join our Indian religion, but uh, it's one of the most uh, trying, most severe. Uh, you have to change your whole lifestyle. You're, and as long as you're a white man, your philosophy of life is different from the Indian people. How is it different? Indians, as I say, Indians are generous and sympathetic people. They want everybody, they ceded all this country to the white man. They practically give it to him. But the white man does not appreciate. He takes a gun and took a shot at violence. Now that's the difference. White men always believe in violence. He never, he's not peaceful. He wants to be. Now that's why he's wrong. Indians don't. But that doesn't mean they can't fight. They'll fight for their, if they have to, they'll defend themselves. But they don't. They don't want, they want to get out of it. They don't want to do it. Because it's against nature. You've got to have peace. So uh, I told them people, I said, it's all right. I said, we welcome you. I said, you could join our religion. You can pray with us. But it will change your whole life, from the white man to that of an Indian. And I'm going to tell you a story. I said, Red Cloud. When they signed the Treaty of 68, Red Cloud refused to sign it. And they asked him why. He said, you are a white man. He said, now I'm an Indian. You said my life is wrong and yours is right. Mm -hmm. What he said, if I have to live like you, he said, I have to, you have to give me a long, long time to make that adjustment. Because first, I have to learn to lie, which is against my religion. I must learn to be greedy, must steal from other people. And I must 
go to other people's country like I have all the rights in the world to do that. That's where you are wrong. I cannot learn it. You have to give me a long, long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that's Red Cloud. That, that's a, he see, uh, what he said is true. Uh, we can't... Uh, Sitting Bull said, <clears throat> white man make many laws. He don't think nothing of breaking them. He's governed by laws, he said, not human. We are governed by human nature, God. We don't have to write it down. We know it in our mind, heart. And he doesn't. He's got to read a book to live his life. When an Indian is dying, they have the four cardinal points, the west, north, east, and the south, heavens and mother earth, the black for west, the red for north, and white for east, yellow for south, and the blue for heaven and the green for Mother Earth. And the symbol is within the realms of God's creation. When you were born, it's like the sun coming up over there. Beautiful to look at. They get up and they pray to the sun. East. Give him a new life. Yeah. A new baby just like a new baby is born in a family bring happiness. And as you travel west, the end of your life, maybe 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, you go into darkness, your life, but your spirit will live on. So when you get ready to die, you sing this. Word is the Father. Grandfather, behold, it is me returning to heaven. Mm -hmm. God created us. He's our Father. Mm -hmm. We're returning to Him. And that is a song. Simple. Mm -hmm. Father, Grandfather, behold, it is me returning to you. My friend, my friend, behold, it's me returning. Father, grandfather, behold, it is me coming home. That's the word, death chant. Your last hour on, the, on earth. Those songs belong to individuals. Society, it cannot go beyond that. You can't, you can't use it. It belongs to me and other people of my kind. It cannot be used by anyone else. That's the restriction. That's why I say religion is hard. Indian religion is hard. You have to attain certain principles, mm -hmm. acquire knowledge mm -hmm. of different belief and faith mm -hmm. before you can use the thing that was handed down to us from generation to generation. You cannot just take it and Use it for show purposes or use it for something else, for your own selfish gain. Yeah. It isn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. I've been asked to make a lot of, I, I know a lot of songs. 
but I was afraid of that, that it could be used, misused. Mm -hmm. That's why I never. I even, I was supposed to write a history of the Indian people, their life, and their culture, and their religion. But even at that, I don't like to go into it any deeper than what I'm telling you. Because there are a lot of things that the world never knew about the Indian people in their religion. We're afraid to tell them because we're afraid that they're going to misuse it. We know that there is a hereafter. Mm -hmm. I could tell them. There is a hereafter. Beautiful. We're all going there. We know that, and Indians are not afraid to die, or they're going to go, just like you go in that door into another world. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people said, God is dead. God is no more. <laughs> this world would be dead if God wasn't ruling it. Yeah. His power is still here. The crazy people, when they say that the Indians say, what manner of man, what kind of people that have that kind of conviction that they don't believe in God, they believe God is not here anymore, God is dead. That is not true. We know that God is here, Indian people, we talk to him every day. Yes, even when we walk and we pray to God, yes, we thank him for all the blessings he gave us. We even pray to the, for the white people. Please visit their mind, their heart, mind, body, and soul, and make a man, different man, closer to you, so this will become a better world. We pray for the white people. We pray for the president. And this summer we're going to do that again. I think uh, Carter, Jimmy Carter, is a religious man. Of course, the whole world will be against him. Mm -hmm. and. There's a lot of things he wants to do, he won't be able to do it. But still, he's going to try. See? That's why I told about the Indian religion, just that don't hurt nothing. No. No. But there are a lot of spiritual things, unseen powers, that we know. Even the they call uh, uh, flying objects. We know what they are. All of this we know. When it was going to the moon, they were circling around there. And they come back and they told the Indians what they're doing over <laughs> See, they, they don't believe in religion. They, they said they pray. Of course, I don't question their sincerity. But Indians are sincere in their prayers and in their religion. And God showed them in many different ways and forms. So those fire bugs, the fire bill, just like marble. We could send one to Germany like that and he'll come back in the next second. Bring news. Those are some of the things that the white men never know. Those are science, scientists, scientists. We have many scientists in Mongolian people. We have many doctors in Mongolian people. We have many walks of life in Mongolian people. More civilized than a lot of white people. We have many herbs that cure many different diseases. But when the white people came into our country, they destroy all of that. Many of our, many of our medicine men are fooled. He said, that's the devil. Did you read in the paper where that guy said, this flying object is the work of the devil? <laughs> they always say that, the white people, you know, when they talk, Indian on their religion, they said, that's the work of the devil. Mm -hmm. He's still saying it. He didn't know nothing about the Indian religion, but that's what he said. That's okay. in the mind of the white man. Okay. 
Bless the miracles and the call it supernatural power. The white men call it supernatural power. We know that thousands of years, maybe forty, fifty thousand years. We know there is a supernatural power because we live with it. We know. We talk to them. We don't want to talk about that. Because in the first place, the white man doesn't believe in nothing. I don't think he believed in God. Don't you think? They don't believe in God. I don't think they believe in God. No. no they believe in the material world. Yes. What they can make. And Materialism. Put together. Yes. Yeah. They don't know that when God punished the people, all of that will be nothing. Mm -hmm. No, they can depend on their material. God showed the people that they are powerless against His power. Like the storm in the east, a lot of people suffered, a lot of people died. That's God's power. But they don't look at it that way. No. That's nature. And nature is God. Yes. He could punish people. I think the white man's Bible said, you shall die. He condemned everybody with capital punishment. There's talking about capital punishment. Sure, God punished her. He said, we we're all done. We're dying in the last 60, 70,000, maybe a million years we've been dying. We're, we were condemned by God. We're going to die because we sinned. That's the white man's religion. Indian people don't look at it that way. And they don't want to be punished. That's why they stay close to God. They know they're going to die, but they also know that they're going someplace where they're going to. Mm. A better world. Mm. A beautiful world. A paradise. Mm. So that's why last Sunday, I was, uh, I was instructing the dancers. We have over 100 dancers, women and children and men. Beautiful ceremony. Because everybody, even the spectators, are concentrating on God. And we see signs in heaven. Some white people were there, they were crying, crying like babies. And after it's over, one of them came to me and said, King, he said, the great spirit loved his red children. He answered their prayers, but given a sign in heaven and we saw it. That's why we cried. We lack power, he said, white man. We cannot do that. So I said, well, we, actually, we hang on to our religion for maybe 40, 50,000 years. We build characters to be better people character. As soon as the child is born, the grandmother and the grandfather and the mother and everybody, everybody in the family is responsible for the growth of that child. They must teach him what is right and what is wrong and become a, a great man or a woman. They build characters. That's Indian civilization. They build characters. They only have one child, maybe two, enough so they can have, take care of them. They don't have, like now, I feel bad about the way that some of these children are treated by the parents. Some of them got killed. You, you read that in the paper, television? Child uh, 
abused. Yeah. Some men was hitting their wives. You know, <laughs> that's the work of the devil, you know that? Yeah, yeah I can see that. <laughs> when you're not stay close to God, you're going to do them things. And the Indians don't want to do that. So that's why they stay close to nature. How do they discipline the children? Teach them what is right and what is wrong, as soon as they're able to walk and able to understand.